Everybody pop on in. Everybody pop on in, pop on in, pop on in. How's everybody doing, fam? <clears throat> Excuse me. How y'all doing on this lovely weekend? Hope everybody's been productive this week. Where's everybody who's coming to the historic event tomorrow? The Rally for Reparations goes down in a few hours, goes down in the morning. Shout out to Sir Major in the room. Shout out to Wayne in the room. Shout out to D. Tubman in the room. Shout out to Brother Adonis in the room. <clears throat> Shout out to Brother Sage in the room. Harriet Tubman's pistol in the room. Dominique in the room. We got the riders in the room. What's up, Deandra? I see you, dear. I see you. Showing light and love. What's up, T Dynamite? I see you, my LA sister. Man, we're so ready for tomorrow. It is going to be on and popping tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be on and popping out here in Washington, D.C. for the, oh, having some technical issues here. Hold on. For the rally for reparations. Hold on. Having some technical glitches and shit here. Hold on. It is going to be on and popping. Um, 11 a.m. at Freedom Plaza, Washington, D.C. That's where it goes down. 11 a.m. Freedom Plaza, Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, you do not want to miss the event. I did a video uh, with Brother Kaba. We're up there today just kind of doing a, a run through. Just a little safety check. You dig? But it's going to be... Well, why is this thing acting up? It's going to be It's going to be phenomenal. Um, a few things we got to touch on before I get into the whole Tiffany Cross thing. A few things I got to touch on. Man, it, it's buck-breaking season right now, family. They are buck-breaking brothers left and right. Do y'all notice this? I did a broadcast last night talking about how the NBA is running everything like a damn plantation. <clears throat> it's getting worse. I saw something where they had Jalen Rose apologizing. He said something. I don't know if this was recent. I don't know what. I just saw the clip. They had him apologizing for getting upset that the white woman who was having the affair with that black coach up there in Boston, right? How come they didn't name her? Which is a legitimate question. How come they didn't put her business out there? Because they do that with everybody else. Now, if a sister was having an affair with somebody, oh, her name would be out there, her mama name, everybody she dated, she'd be all types of... Um, um, mammies and whores but the white woman they sat there and protected her and damn near made her a victim and Jalen Rose I think he made a comment to the effect of hey how come they're not putting her name out there and then they came back from a commercial and then he was bucking his eyes nigga explaining well you know I said something I wasn't supposed to say I had thought about it and um, I do understand that that woman is a subordinate and her uh you know, my comments was inappropriate. I surely is sorry. I'm like, God damn. They are making examples out of black men on TV right now, man. This is a sad moment right now, man. They're making examples out of, look, when you get those corporate jobs, that's part of the game, man. You get those corporate jobs, you know, unfortunately, you're going to have to play ball. You're going to have to dance to their tune, so to speak. Yeah. And when they pull out the fiddle, you better start tap dancing. Unfortunately, you see, y'all, this is why you don't get too comfortable around people in the dominant society. You always try to get in a position where you can be an independent person, where you can get stuff popping independently so that you don't have to play those racial politic games. Get my book, Foundational Black American Race Bait. I talked about office politics. I talked a lot about that in the book. Real good game on that. Y'all got to get the book, Foundation of Black American Race Beta. Real heavy book on that. <clears throat> because, like I said, the corporate sector is a form of warfare. It's a form of warfare. And when you go into the, the corporate sector, people are playing games against you. Black folks go into to the corporate sector. You go to the workplace and you start thinking everything is one big jolly plantation family. It ain't like that, man. Y'all better go in there thinking strategically you better go in there thinking okay what can i get out of the game because uh, in hollywood the white boys play the game a certain way 
they'll work for somebody long enough so they can get some gain and then they bounce. The white boys, they'll work for somebody long enough until they can get some game and then they're up out of there. I've, I've dealt with white, and I've talked about this before in Hollywood. I would be in the middle of a deal with one white guy, white agent at a certain production company. We're working on the deal one month, and then a, two months later, he's like, hey, man, what's up, Tariq? I'm at a new company, man. I started my own company, so I want you to come over here and sign, and let's shop a deal. I'm like, damn. I would see that all the time. They'll work for a company, learn the game, and then start their own company. Hollywood is full of that. The white boys know how to go in there, soak up some game, and get some shit popping on his own. We got to start thinking like that, family. It's very imperative. But to the main topic... Shout out to Wani. I see you in here, Wani. I see you, beloved. So Tiffany Cross, man. Tiffany Cross from MSNBC. Boy, they made a huge announcement about firing her today. Oh, my God. Poor Tippy Tiff. Now, this is the Tiffany Cross. Remember, a few weeks ago, she called me out by name. She was like, listen, black men, and y'all stop listening to people like Tariq Nasheed and Kevin Samuels. You don't listen to Tariq Nasheed. Fall in line, black man. Fall in line with black women. Oh, y'all remember that? Fall in line and don't listen to Tariq Nasheed. Girl called me out by name. She has a bug in her ass about me for a long time. So she thought she would try to throw me under the bus. That backfired and she tried to be the, the plantation sapphire. And white mommy and white daddy turned on her. Damn. Poor thing. Let me, I'm going to be real. I'm not going to be petty. I, I was thinking petty thoughts. I'm, you know what? I, I don't wallow in misfortune. Even though the woman tried to throw me under the bus, I'm, I'm not going to wallow in misfortunes. But I just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with full transparency. I was going to be petty, but I had to fight the petty off. I was going to do a cartoon about Tiffany Cross. I was going to put her in the next Bucci Bear cartoon. Oh, I was thinking the whole plot out. I was going to have Tiffany Cross get fired. And she needs some money. <laughs> and then she got with Percy Earl. <laughs> it's like, I'm in a bind, Percy. <laughs> oh, I'll take care of you. <laughs> I said, that's just too goddamn petty. I can't do that. That's just, that's beneath me. <laughs> I was going to have her do a, I'm in a bind, Nate. I was going to have her do a scene like that. <laughs> I need that money, Nate. Who will you? Well, you know, I need a little something too. <laughs> a closed mouth don't get bad now. <laughs> Poor Tiffany, man. We got to get her straight before, she get, before, before we lose her to the streets. There's a sugar daddy circling around in an Oldsmobile right now. Like, oh, I know she's going to need a little something pretty soon now. Honk, honk. Hey, I'm over here. <laughs> Yo, let's not lose it to the streets yet. Poor Tiffany. How are you going to throw me under the bus and then get thrown under the damn bus? Damn. This is the problem. The Democratic shields, they know the Democrats are about to lose right now. The Democrats are losing. Let me tell you why they're throwing their shields under the bus, because they're looking at the polling numbers and they're seeing that these numbers for the Democrats are terrible. They see that the Democrats are not getting the support they're supposed to get. And they're like, hey, all these Negroes we got up here rolling and Tiffany trying to toe the line for us. They're not effective, which is true. They're not effective. Their job, again, they put these Negroes on, on, on TV to be sassy towards us and try to browbeat us into just voting Democrat just for the hell of it. And we are getting more politically sophisticated. We're saying, no, we're not going to do that. So the white powers that be, they're, they're going on a cleansing spree right now. They're getting all of their Negroes in line. As you see, they're getting the plantation straight. You did? They're like, okay, if y'all Negroes can't, flip the minds of the black masses you're useless here get your walking papers and all you sports negroes we're gonna make an example out of you y'all better get out there and throw Kyrie under the bus y'all better get out there and buck your eyes negro oh shannon sharp I, I and i like shannon sharp but boy when he was buck dancing 
Oh, it, and and I could I could kind of low key see the low I could see the embarrassment in Shannon Sharp's eyes because he knew he was cooning. Shannon knew he was cooning. He couldn't even get the cooning out straight. No, 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 Kyrie, he said he's sorry. And I, how you gonna be sorry? You didn't apologize. You, 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 you see, skip, skip. Not, 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 not skip. How he gonna be sorry? Sorry means you are gonna have to have have, have an atonement. Ain't, ain't that right, skip, skip? Hey, uh, 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 skip. Lord. Oh, I was so disappointed in Shannon, man. And now, did y'all hear? They just um took away um Kyrie's Nike deal. Hey, listen, man, we're going to have to start as a group. And I wear Nike, but I take these bitches back. I wear Nike, but Nike can kiss my ass if they're going to be on that, if they're going to be on that vibe. Black folks sit up here and make Nikes billions of dollars and they want to start getting on the, the anti-black train because this all, all of this is about anti-blackness. This whole Kyrie thing is all anti-black racism, dude. It's all about getting us in line. Just like the, the prime minister of Israel, not the prime minister, but the um, ambassador to Israel. Yeah, we put Kyrie in his place. Yeah, we have to put him in his place. These folks ain't even playing around with how they feel about us with their anti-black racism. You got to stand up to that. We got to stand up to that, ladies and gentlemen. We in here heavy. Let me get some folks in here. Let me let's get um the black queen. What's up, brother Marcel? I see you. The black queen. Hello, brother Tariq. How you doing, sir? I'm good, beloved. How are you? I am wonderful. I just have two things to say. We all knew. Janelle Hill was going to come in. Tap dance. Oh, God, I forgot about <laughs> Janelle. Oh, God, speaking of mammy and oh. oh, God. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, sister. Go ahead. And, and also, like, I'm just not going to spend any money with Nike. I'm done with the NBA. I'm really going to hold to it and stand up for our community and our brother Kyrie because this has gotten ridiculous. They trying to flex their muscles, but I know it's going to backfire. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much, dear. Um, yeah, my sister brought up a very good point. I put it in the Jumbotron. Um, click that up there, guys. J Jamel Hill, you know, the head mammy in charge wasn't going to let herself be out the mammy mix. Oh, she wrote an article, and this is her tweet. Wrote a col column for The Atlantic on Kyrie Irving and the complicated relationship some black men having and finding their identity. Get the hell out of here. Boy, that woman is a black man hater. She just found a way. I told y'all, this is about black, not just black men. It's about black people. Don't even be fooled by that whole black man stuff. This is about black people. So you knew her man hate mass had to come in and throw all black men under the bus. Well, yeah, Kyrie represents how black men can't find their identity. Shut your Chucky doll looking ass up. Give me a damn break. Boy, the mammies are mammying. Um, Marcel, there was a my brother Marcel and Connie and Jade. They were out here um, stomping um, and having meetings with some of these elected officials. Because we got our brothers and sisters out here making power moves. They're trying to make some moves, talking to some of these people in office. Um, Marcel, did y'all have a conversation with a mammy? <laughs> I heard a mammy blew up at y'all today. Y'all had a conversation with some mammy. Um, and then she started talking greasy. Were, were you on that call? Jade and Connie told me about it. Hop on real quick, Marcel. Marcel, what happened? Were you on the call, Marcel? Hold on. Let me get Marcel in here. What's up, Marcel? Where you at, bro, bro? Marcel. Marcel down to eat some chicken wings with mumbo sauce. What's up, Marcel? Hop on, brother. Okay, Marcel is having some technical difficulty. While we're waiting on Marcel, let me get a couple of other people in here. Let me get a couple of other folks in here. We'll get you back on in a second, Marcel. What's up, Juicy Jean? Juicy, are you in town, dear? Are you in town, Juicy? Wani, are you in town? You should have been out here, Wani. Wani, if you should have been in town if you're not here. Hope you're here, Wani. You could have got flued out. We would have flued you out. Well, let me get Juicy in here. 
What's up, Juice Juice? Peace and power, King Tariq. Um, no, I'm actually leaving New Jersey in a few hours to head to D.C. Okay. I'm going to be there about 8 a.m., and I'm tapping in with uh, Ola and Connie as soon as I get in in regards to media relations. So, oh, yes, cool. I'll be seeing the family soon. Yes, ma'am. See you in the morning, dear. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's going to be popping. Yeah, Revolt is going to be out here. Revolt TV is going to be covering the event. So, Revolt is going to be here. Okay, we got Marcel back. Okay, let's get Brother Marcel in here. What's up, Marcel? With a representative, her name's Marcel Bryant, I believe, from okay. Representative Quigley's office. He's a, a member of the House of Representatives from Illinois. And yeah, so we pretty much gave her facts about how illegal immigration, mainly how it's hurting Black Americans, and we pretty much uh, contrasted how they're they're getting policies and benefits. Di uh, directed to them, but the Democrats don't exist because of us. And she listened, but afterwards she was like, "Well, I can tell you right now, uh, Representative Quigley and I, I, my, me myself, we will not. He would not agree with most of what you said." And when Connie asked her, "Why would you not agree?" she was like, "Well, um, we do not. We do not participate in the demonizing and the othering of immigrants here." And oh, I boy. said to her, I said, okay, well, so Connie was like, how do you other people? I said, no, hold on, Connie, before we even go to that. I said, so we just sat here and gave you statistics, a rundown of the dire straits of descendants of American slaves. And the only thing you've taken away from that is how offended you are about how we spoke about illegal immigrants. And I said, what is one policy that you have in mind or that your representative is speaking about that or, or what's your thoughts about what we mentioned about descendants of American slaves, freedmen? She didn't say one damn thing. So when Connie went in on her, she was like, oh, y'all said this was about immigration. Now y'all talking about reparations. And Connie said, well, you know, the two are really tied together. But she was like, well, y'all have to find another office who will take your legislation up. And I will, and I said to her, this is why y'all losing black support, especially with black men, black women too, but especially with black men, because of this right here. And I said, you better believe I'm going to let everyone know about this conversation we had. I said, believe that. So, yeah. Yep. I want you to talk about that I tomorrow. Am. We're going to let Yes, indeed. So, my man, get you some rest, man. We're going to see you in the morning, Marcel. All right, that's Brother Marcel. So, yeah, man, we my, the family's out here chopping it up, talking to people, trying to, to get some dots connected. And, hey, man, if people are going to be on the BS, we're going to let you know who they are. If they're going to prioritize other groups over us, we're going to let you know who they are. We're just not going to support them. It's time to put everybody on blast. That's why they're so mad at us doing this event. That's why they're so mad. Rolling mad. Again, rolling, calling it out. Listen, stupid fool. Since y'all going, y'all y'all ain't going to listen to me. I'm telling y'all, how y'all going to not vote? That's stupid as hell. Now y'all can take y'all dumb asses up to that rally for reparations Saturday. But let me tell you something. Stupid fool, job turkey. You ain't going to get shit if you don't vote. Shut up, nigga. Get your ass up. You ain't about to scare us. That don't scare us. Let me get my brother Afro Elite up in here. Afro Elite, what's up, brother? Afro Elite, brother, how you doing? My brother, I'm good. Sound like you're on the road right yeah, now. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, I am. Actually, I'm just leaving. Um, just doing some sightseeing. I'm in D.C. right now, actually. So, oh, cool. Yeah, cool. Uh, I wanted to tell you, you are not lying about the mumble bus. I tried some oh, earlier today. A... Um, oh. <laughs> I almost drunk the damn bottle. I went to the store. I bought a bottle. I almost <laughs> drunk the thing. Uh, that mumble sauce is nothing to play, to play with, brother. Play like with. you were, you were yeah. very on point with that. Yes, indeed. Definitely man. have to get. But man, we look forward to. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow, brother. Man, I and the thing about DC, man, different places got different flavors of the damn mumble sauce. I went to um, Henry's Soul Food today. And they got some chicken wings. People think I'll be bullshitting about these that damn mambo sauce. I, anywhere there's some mambo sauce, I'm there. And boy, they had some mambo sauce that had a barbecue swang to it. I'm like, oh, man. Y'all ain't bullshitting out here in D.C. I think I was sitting on the side of the road like a homeless man eating them bitches, walking to the car. I didn't even wait till I got to the, the room. Damn, I was looking like a damn 
hobo eating them damn chicken wings. Nigga, a homeless man offered me $5. Like, nigga, you look like you need this. You okay? Like, damn. But nigga, that mumbo sauce ain't nothing to play with. And they, every store you go to, man, they put a little different spin on it. It's popping. Yeah. Let me get some more folks in here. Let me get some more people in here. Yeah. Oh, let's get Black Alpha. Brother Black Alpha Network. Let's get Black Alpha Network in the house. What's up, brother? Yes, sir, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm in town right now, man. Ready for the morning. <clears throat> My man, I appreciate you, man. Oh, yeah. How you liking DC? So I'm far? loving it, man. I'm loving it real good. I just about a nine and a half hour ride from Georgia, man. All the way up top. Oh, yeah. Wow. A lot of people are driving. How come y'all just don't hop on a plane? Everybody's driving up here. Hey, you know what's crazy, family? I was going to fly, but then you know what? I was like, let me cut through the south. And on the way here, actually, I seen cotton fields with rainbows shining over them. So I said, oh, you know it's our time. It's our time. Oh, wow. Hey, but you know what I want to tell oh, you, yeah. brother, is... On the way up here, all I heard was a bunch of Democratic commercials, and they're afraid right now, brother. They are so scared. Yeah. Aren't, you have you been noticing that, brother? Yeah, man. It's heavy right now. They're stumping hard. Yes. yes. You know, so um, what I've been, you know, just realizing the whole time is that, you know, as, as we get close to this and, you know, our time is now, the Democrats are so afraid. And people like Roland Martin, they know that uh, Democratic Shield pink slip is going to become rolling in. So uh, we're going to be laughing at yeah. the time. But I, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, brother. And I'm going to go ahead and land my plane. Thank you so much, brother. Listen, fam, I'm telling y'all, the, the shills, they're nervous right now. They're nervous. They are very nervous. They, they they made an example out of Tiffany by firing her ass, and they did it real stank in public. They, they don't do white, they don't do the white women reporters like that. They'll say, well, we didn't, um, such and such has moved on. She didn't renew her contract. With, with Tiffany Cross, they were like, yeah, MSNBC, we're not renewing our contract. And she is um, um, terminated immediately. They're terminating their relationship with her immediately. I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, they just threw her little ass right under the bus. Damn. They made an example out of her. So Roland and those guys are over there sweating bullets. They're sweating mambo sauce right now. Because they cannot galvanize the black vote. That's why they're so mad at us. That's why they curse us out every night. No, no, no. They thought that they were trying to shame me because people are listening to what we have to say over here because we're nonpartisan. I'm not, I don't give a shit about neither one of the parties, dude. I don't care about neither one of them. Whoever's going to give black people as a group benefits, that's who I'm rolling with. I ain't loyal to none of them. A libertarian, an independent, I don't give a damn what you are. You got a check for foundational black Americans. I'm voting for your ass. That's all I'm down with. Who's going to give us some tangibles? I ain't loyal to none of these people. I ain't trying to go to the Democratic um, disco dinner. I'm not trying to go to the bullshit boule brunch. I'm not trying to go to the NAACP fish fry. None of that. And I'm not trying to be a 10 percenter at all. I want my people to get the tangibles they are supposed to get. Point to the damn blank. And anybody who's down to get it, that's who I'm supporting. If you ain't giving us nothing, I ain't rocking with you. And I'm going to encourage other people not to rock with you. Yeah. Because people are not dumb. People see who's a shield and who's not a shield. That's why people ain't really rocking with the, the, the black democratic outreach groups. Ain't nobody playing that game no more because they see what it is. They see, hey, man, you're a shill. You're up here trying to get me to vote for nothing. And you're telling me all of these so-called secondary benefits that I'm getting. Well, no, listen, brother, if you vote Democrat, see, it's going, there's going to be a minority coalition and you're going to benefit. No, no, that's for every other group, dude. That's for everybody. No, 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 no. What you don't understand um, with Biden, Biden got some good things for the black community. Biden got some real good stuff. Like what? Well, um... Well, he has the um, the lift all plan with a nothing burger. That's a damn nothing burger. Well, then the, 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 then they have to do the well. The Republicans. What about the Republicans? How are you gonna let the Republicans win? They really ain't gonna do nothing for you. That's the line they that they get. They get their talking points from the top. That's why they all say the exact same thing every week. They say the exact same talking points. They get these little memos from the white top brass at the DNC. And to, to be honest, let me let me tell you about the corporate sector, because, again, even when I would do stuff on CNN and all that stuff, 
they would give us talking points to go by. You did, there would be certain stories in, in the news that they wouldn't want you to talk about, and they would kind of craft together certain stories that they want you to talk about. You dig? And talk about it in a certain way. And they would oftentimes want to interview you ahead of time and have you tell what your answers are going to be. They do that a lot in television. A lot of y'all don't know that. And normally I always give them the wrong answer. I say, I'm going to say one thing and then I get on TV and say something completely different. You know, so uh, the news, man, the news is more scripted than what you think it is. What you think is news is not really news. It's propaganda. So like, for example, I'd, I'd, I'd get an email from one of these news networks and they want me to come on and then they'll send me some emails. So Ter Tarek, yeah, that's how white people say it. Tarek. Hey, Tarek. Um, so we're going to, let me, let me send you a couple of the questions um, and let's go over them and then you know, tell me what your answers are going to be. Let me know what you're going to say. So in this case, um, a police officer um, shot a black suspect in the back and the police officer um, is not going to be charged. Now, what are you going to say to that? Well, I'm going to say, well, I, I buck my eyes a little bit. Well, I think we did need some more. There need to be some more accountability. You know, if the Lord see fit, we can find some justice under here somewhere because that sure ain't right to be shooting people all in their back and stuff. The Lord won't like that. Oh, perfect answer. Oh, okay, great. Okay, so we're going to put you on at 8 o'clock. And they, they asked me the question at 8 o'clock, nigga. <laughs> I'm doing the Birdman hand rub. So, Terry, Terry. What do you think about this? This white officer shot a black suspect in the back. The suspect was committed to crime and the officer wasn't um, charged. What do you think about that? I said, I think it's systematic white supremacy. OK, we're going to a commercial. Real, we're going to um, take a commercial break and we'll be right back after these messages. That's why y'all see me on TV. They cut to commercial fast as hell. Fox News is good for that. They cut me. They cut me off in mid sentence. I be going in on the people at Fox News. I've been in Fox News still talking. I'm talking. And then somebody come in the room like, okay, Terry, you can leave. I'm like, what? We, we off the air? I'm still talking. I didn't know y'all cut the feed. Y'all cut the feed? I'm still in there talking. It ain't even on TV no more. They didn't cut me off. Like, damn. Oh, yeah. If you start going in, they'll cut your ass. They'll cut to a commercial or you be there. Um, doing sign language, they won't hear you. They'll turn your mic off. You dig? Man, man, man. Let me get some more people in here because we're in here heavy. Let's get, um, what's this, Broke You? Okay, let's get, no, Broke Uncle. All right, let's get Broke Uncle in here. What's up, Broke Uncle? Mr. Broke Uncle, what's up, brother? All right, want to turn your microphone on? Can you hear me now? I can hear you. What's up, bro? Uh, I'm doing good, man. Uh, I, I wish you and everybody up there in D.C. the best with this rally for I reparations thing, man. I won't be able to go to attend, but um, I just had one question, then I'm going to land my plane. Will it be live streamed? Um, yeah, some people might be live streaming it. We're not going to officially live stream it because we're going to have a DJ okay. there and you know what I'm saying? You play copyrighted music, they'll strike your page. Okay, and uh, so, one last thing about the Tiffany Cross thing. I mean, let this serve as a lesson to everybody, all the black, the young black journalists out there who want, who want to work in media, because I work in media as well, and I can tell you it is not the avenue of cake and ice cream that Tiffany Cross and Joy Reid make it out to be. As soon as you yeah. get there, they are looking to replace you. And this should serve as a lesson to all my black females out there who want to get in media. You see Tiffany Cross, you see Joy Reid, you saw that special that they did with them standing up there and drinking all that wine and toasting to themselves as if they made it, when in reality, the knife was being, was being put in their back the moment that the, mm -hmm. the, the, the show ended. So don't, yep. don't get fat and happy just because you have your own television show on cable. As soon as the white establishment gives it to you, as quickly as they can take it from you. And I'm out. Yeah. Thank you. And my brother made a very good point. Let me talk to my sisters here. The most of my sisters here, y'all up on game and y'all know the truth and y'all know the deal. 
and you know the reality of white supremacy. You already know. But what they do, they get these these mammies up here who try to think that they're feminist and all of that stuff. And they get them to sit up here and push that gender nonsense. Yeah. Fall in line with black women, black girl magic. We let these white liberals pump you up with that black girl magic as if you are a protected class and you are not. Y'all better get that in your head. These white folks will pump your head up just so that you can antagonize other black men but they sit here and act like you're some kind of protected class and y'all fall for that game. And then what happens is they embarrass you and throw you under the bus like they did Tiffany Cross. She's She was sitting up there thinking she had it made, trying to throw br- brothers under the bus and trying to act like, you know, the, the bell of the ball and all of that. They made a complete imbecile out of that sister. I, I feel bad. That's why I won't even go in on it. They embarrassed her so bad. You dig? They don't do the white women like that. They don't shame the the white women like that they let them you know exit with a little dignity you dig because you know they they want the white woman to go get a job somewhere else they don't want to just besmirch your your image you dig and plus white women they they get their sue game on white women start filing lawsuits you embarrass them you know white women you know they they get the lawsuits popping because the dominant society is on code with them so we better understand how the game is being played out here, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get some more folks in here. We got a a lot of people in here tonight. The vibes are good out here in D.C. It's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow. It's going to be a beautiful day out here in Washington, D.C. tomorrow. Let's see some of the people down here on the bottom here. What's up, J.L.? J.L., are you here, dear? I see my brother Rilla Perry in here. Um, I see a lot of new faces in here. JL, are you in town, ma'am? Give us a thumbs up if you're in town, JL. Thumbs up if you're in town, thumbs down if you're not. She's here. There you go. The lovely JL. All right. Y'all come out there and make a love connection. We're trying to make it all pop off. Let's get Brother Sage in here. Let's get Sage in here popping with it. Then we'll get Brother Samir in here. What's up, Sage? Brother Flex, how's everything going, bro? I'm good, man. I'm How are chilling, you, bro? man. I'm in D.C., man. I can smell the cools from a mile away, brother. But, um, <laughs> I'll be there tomorrow. Um, it's going to be seven of us. You know, New York is definitely in the building. Um, I want to say love we it. love you, brother. We're going to see you tomorrow. And um, shout out to you. I got to at it. Like this one. What's up, y'all? I can't wait for tomorrow. We out here. My man, I appreciate y'all for coming down, my New York brothers, man. We can't wait to yes, see y'all sir, tomorrow, Yes, bro. sir. You be saying if you already know what time it is. No, no doubt. Y'all be good, brothers. And it's going to be beautiful tomorrow. Let's get a brother Samir in here. What's up, Samir? Yo, what up? Uh, so are we still on the topic about Tiffany? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't really feel bad at all. I think, uh, I feel, I guess in the sense that you know, she's getting the treatment that, unfortunately, black women get in these spaces. But, uh, you know, her and Joy- Joanne Reed, I mean, I don't know if you heard what she was saying about inflation. Joanne Reed, that comment she made, talking about how people don't understand that vernacular and stuff. And she was just talking some nonsense. So, um, yeah, I mean, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Like, Real talk. Yeah, yeah, I got it. And Joy Reid is next, by the way. They've been dangling Joy Reid's job over her head for a minute. And I think Joy Reid's ass um, um, blocked me, too. Tiffany blocked me, and I don't even tweet Tiffany. Yeah, they, yeah, they think that they're slick. Joy Reid blocked me. And Tiffany blocked me a, a while back. She's been blocked me for years. Like, I don't even tweet at you, sis. And now she done got blocked from employment. Damn, girl. Somebody called Percy Earl so he can trick off some of that Social Security check on her. <laughs> Poor Tiffany. <laughs> hey there, Tiffy. I heard um heard heard you got some bad news there, baby. Well, <laughs> well all news ain't bad news now. <laughs> There's a beacon of light. In the rain. <laughs> for, yeah, for every trash for every man's trash, there's another man's treasure now. 
talking that sugar daddy talk. <laughs> oh, the sugar daddy's about to push up on um Tiffany. But Tiffany, let me let me say this. Even though Tiffany hates me, Tiffany is cute. I will give her that. Tiffany is a cute chick. She's cute. Tiffany is a cute chick. So the sugar daddies are gonna be circling around her ass. And she she's not gonna get a job anytime soon. So the Percy Earls and Charlie Rays are driving around in them Lincolns, them Lincoln Continentals right now. <laughs> oh, the the vultures are circling. Yeah, that's the kind of that's the kind of woman that sugar daddy's like. How old is Tiffany? Only she's like 40, 43. She's like 43, still fine though. So them sugar daddies like them a nice cool 43-year-old woman. Like, oh girl, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Tiffany. You know you you ain't got the wants for nothing. Girl, I got you. Anything you need, I go in and change that smoke detector battery. I'll change it at the drop of a hat, baby. Lord, how is they gonna fire you like that, baby? You call Percy Earl for anything you need. I'm in the bind, Percy. Yes, yeah, I, I know you is. <laughs> well, you know, I can get you out that bind, baby. For real, Percy? <laughs> For real. <laughs> what I gotta do? <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> oh, Tiffany. <laughs> Poor Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany, damn, baby, just down bad right now. <laughs> Poor girl. Boy, the sugar daddies are going to be knocking the boots. Let's get um, Mark in here. <laughs> Mark, what's up? Hey, what's going on, Tariq? I'm good, man. What's on your mind? Okay. Man, I just wanted to uh, speak on something real quick about the Kyrie thing. I think it's a great lesson that we could learn as just black people in general. Um, we we yeah. didn't gave out the culture so much for so many years of just our culture and swag and making shit cool like Nikes and Adidas and all of that shit. I think we really dropped the ball with building their empire without building our own for situations like Real these. Talk. You know what I'm saying? And there's only like one dope black shoe designer that I've met that I've actually just seen. His name is the Sia Collective. Um, I don't know if anybody yeah. heard of him, but he's a black. I don't know if they should try to work together him. Yay. Kyrie, I mean, and this is the perfect opportunity for all these NBA players and NFL players to be like, man, fuck all that. Like, let's stand strong together. But we'll see if that happens. I yeah. doubt it. But that's all I wanted to say. Well, we need to. That's a good point you made, brother. Very good point. Um, see, you know, the thing is with us, um, we value white approval. You understand? It's easy for us to make sneakers and shoes. It's easy. Just go to the same factories in the Philippines or the same factory in China. Everybody goes to the same factories. You go to those factories over there in the, the Far East and have the, the factory. You give them, give them your designs and they'll put it together. But the thing is, man, we, we got a thing about knowing that there's white approval to it. Unfortunately, on a subconscious level, we value white approval. If a white person validates something, that means that it's legit in our eyes. And we got to get that out of our system. There's um, there's a video that came out in the 1950s called Selling to the Negro. I talked about this before. And it was talking about the buying habits of black people and how white people can sell products to black people. And some of the stuff they were saying, it was like some real blatant racist stuff, but a lot of it was real because they were like, well, the Negro, well, the thing about the Negro, they like to feel important. They've been beaten down so much. You know, they want to feel a sense of respect. You know, they want people to respect them. So a lot of black people, when they buy products, they tend to buy name brand products because it makes them feel better and it, it makes them feel a certain level of respect. You understand? And that was some real shit. And name brand, meaning white name brand, because we've been disrespected so much, we think if we wear a white name brand, um, that gives us a certain validity. We can afford this white name brand, so give me respect. Just like with shoes. I have name brand shoes. Respect me. Don't disrespect me or my shoes. If you step on my shoes, I'm going to kill you. 
You see, that's where that crazy murdering nonsense comes from when people get yelled over shoes and all that. But yeah, it's a respect thing. We think that we're supposed to garner more respect by buying things that are aligned with whiteness. Let's get Queen in here. Queen Tizzo. What's up, Queen Tizzo? Queen Tizzo, where you at, dear? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. So where are you from, dear? Atlanta. Okay. Um, are you you're in Atlanta now? I am. Okay, so what's on your mind? So ma'am? I just wanted to add to the conversation. Like everything that you said had a lot of it. It was absolutely true. But to take it a step further, I think now more than ever so, it's so imperative that we actually start using the power that we do have. Like since we know on a subconscious level in time past, we needed to have validation. But now it's time for us to come together collectively and just start boycotting on an individual level. So like me personally, I decided that I have a business account with Chase, closing that account and really just looking at, you know, ways individually we can actually take a step further to like, make sure we use the power that we do have to make sure when stuff like this happens, it doesn't continue. And I think that now is a time for us to basically stand up and say, you know what? Enough is enough. Okay. I can't do this, but I can do this. Like I can't stop watching the NBA. I can't stop buying Nike shoes. I can't stop. And just everybody right now make a decision moving forward. You're going to do X, Y, Z. I think that's a great way to start moving forward with the actual solution. Yes, ma'am. That's very good ideas. Now, what do you do down there in Atlanta? You look very herbal tea-ish. What do you do down there? Um, I'm an artist. I'm a social impact artist. And there you go. that's all I want to share at this time. I got it. I got it. We're not putting your business out there, dear. There you go. All right. Well, thank you so much, beloved. I appreciate you. Thank you. Of course, Queen, Queen Tizzo. Real herbal tea vibe. Like she got a a whole pot of some elderberry tea in there right now, drinking it, smoking a blunt. She's a very earthy girl. All right, let's get, um, who, who's this person? we got a few people in here. Yeah, Atlanta got a lot of those herbal tea women down there. Let's get um DMV. Let's get DMV here. What's up, DMV? DMV, what's up, brother? What's going on, man? It's official Nick Tower from Woodbridge, Virginia. I'll just uh, I want to add a quick question, man, and I mean this in the best faith possible. Um, but I remember one time you were talking about just you know not trusting people that just pop up out of nowhere, and I'm curious, have you ever seen Professor Black Truth or Jason Black in person? And yes or no, where does that leave us? You know, if we've never seen these people, are these people that we should? you know, trust or follow seeing as we've never seen them before or just base it off, you know, other things. Not just like, like Okay. Okay, well the no, the question is has Jason Black or Professor Black Truth ever said ever said anything detrimental to black society? No, not necessarily, but I've had horrible things happen to me. I've reached out to this man and I've gotten back, you know, one word answers or none at all and you know, things from, you know, you want to buy advertising. I'm like, you know, no, dude, I'm hitting you up on the private, you know, <laughs> after you said I could reach out to you. So I'm just, I don't know. I'm just, the anonymity thing, I just, you know, leaves me to wonder because I can see you, you know what I'm saying? But even with that, you know, you, you can't trust everything that everybody says or does, regardless of whether you can see them or not. I'm just saying, the, you know, we don't know if they're white or black. Or... No, they, you know they're not no goddamn white people. You know I don't know that, though, brother. You do know that. You know good and well those brothers are not white, man. Come on. What are you talking but about? But I don't know that. That's what I'm saying. I've never seen them, so I'm just you saying. You do know that. You, you can I don't know that. That's why I'm bringing up the question, but I'll just, I'll just leave it there. You so. know, brother. All right. Okay, brother, because that's a bad faith fucking argument, brother. You know good and well they're not white. Stop it. Sound like you just got some kind of personal bullshit, man. Come on. What have they done to undermine black people in any way well not necessarily well not at all they've done nothing to undermine black society so don't sit here lying sound like you got some personal beef probably jason probably clowned you on the phone or something and you sound salty so don't 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 come with that stupid shit he probably got on the phone with jason jason clowned him and and he, he feels a certain way personally you did so don't start that dumb shit let's get brother marcel back in here Brother Marcel, hop on, brother. 
brother Marcel. Get involved and people do stuff like this. But I'm just going to say for the record, I actually met Jason Black in public before when he came down here to Charleston. Remember that whole video with Clyburn cursed out, cursed everyone out. Um, yeah. Jason Black was there. He's definitely a black man. And I'm not going to say more than that because I want to respect him. if he wants people to see how he looks, he'll do that. But I've seen him. He Other people have seen him before. I just want to put it out there. Yeah, the other people have seen him. He's filmed. He, right. yeah, people know so him. I just want to say that. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much, brother. And yeah, the dude, his 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 argument was in bad faith anyway. So, um, Clinton, brother Clinton, Clinton P. Jackson, boy, that's a black name. What's up, Clinton P.? It is, it is. FBA here, all in the building. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. How you doing, brother? That's what's up. Shout out to uh, this weekend. I won't be there. I am on the road, but I am definitely in support of uh, the rally for reparations. So, shout out to that. Salute to you and the FBA family. Um, I'm based in New York, um, and also my great great grandfather is FBA first um, black man to graduate graduate from Cornell Law. I'm an attorney my, myself, oh, cool. so I just want to put that out there as well. Um, but I'm speaking on a Kyrie event, and first of all, I want to know how can young brothers? Because I think the media is kind of like jacking him up um, from top to bottom, and he's only 30 years old, so we might not necessarily have like the um, ability to strategically navigate the, the various nuances of this world. So like our, our young folks tapping into people like you tapping into other brothers like Riza Islam and things of that nature. And then secondarily, um, my question would be, how can we all get on accord once our brothers get attacked? Like how can we attack um, corporations like Nike and others? Um, to just if they're spanking our our people, how can we spank them, right. so to speak? So that's my question. Here, I'll lay my plane there and keep it real short. Thank you so much. Yeah. So one way we could spank them by not supporting them, we can um, um, take back some of the support we give these people. We ain't got to rush to the store and get everything they throw out there. We we don't have to support these people. It's not imperative that we get their shoes. When they attack certain black people, we have to make an example out of them. And say, no, we're not going to support that. And another thing, we, we do have a lot of people tapping into what we're doing. Fortunately, we do have a pretty young audience. So a lot of the young cats are getting into what we're doing and getting into the knowledge and getting into the consciousness. We just got to keep on and keep beating that drum so that, you know, the word and the messaging will spread. All right. Let's get um, some more folks in here. How many people we got? How many people? We got damn near 900 people. We're in here deep, and I ain't going to be out here too long because I need to have my ass in bed because I got to be up very early getting ready for the event because they, they're they starting very early. Let's get um, Arising. Let's get Sister Arising. Arising Diamond Beauty. Hop on, beloved. Hop on, dear. Hop on Arising Diamond Beauty. Well, yes, sis. You can start speaking now, ma'am. We're waiting on you to start speaking. Is your, your microphone straight, dear? A rising where well, yeah, babe. Okay. Well, she has to get her phone together. All right, let's try it again in a minute, sis. Let's get some more folks in here. Let's get um um comeback kid. Let's get the comeback kid in here. What's up, comeback kid? Where you at? There's a lot of people popping in and out, man. Yo, oh my bad. Yo, I'm sorry. I'm at work. Okay. Oh, you didn't mean to get on? Bro? Yeah, I can hear you. Hold on. I'm about to go in that thing right here. Oh. Oh, hello. What's good? What's okay? Let me get some. Hey, hey, Miss Brown. What's my, your name? My name is Shane. What's up, Shay? How oh, are you? Oh, I'm dear? fine. Oh, I just wanted to say I saw that Tiffany Cross got fired. That's so crazy to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was so crazy. Um, uh, well, before I got over here, just thank you for everything you do. This is really weird talking to you. Um, but uh, what advice do you give people? Um, when you know they want to like move like out of state, you know they really don't have um a lot of family in other states and stuff like that. 
Now, where do you live now? I, I live in Kansas now. Yeah, okay. And how old are you? Oh, I'm 30. Okay. You have any kids? Yeah, I do. I have two children. Okay. So you want to move out of Kansas. Now, what city were you thinking about moving okay, to? Okay, so I was really thinking about Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking about moving out there, like opening up like a business and just being out that way. Now, what the hell are you doing in Kansas? Right now, I work uh, for a hospital. I'm not gonna... Now, were you born? In, now, were you born and raised? In yeah, Kansas? yeah, the, yes, yes. I'm, I'm from here. Oh, okay, okay. Um, where are your baby daddies? <laughs> uh, I have no clue where he is at, at all. Okay, you, you haven't talked to him? No, I have not. Lord, Lord, Lord. Okay, I know you about so... to eat me. Up. <laughs> no. Oh man, so y- y'all got to start making some good decisions here. All right, so now you got to get these two babies and take them down there to Atlanta, and then you got to get babysitters. And now, how old are the babies? Uh, one is eight, and another one's four. Okay, they're pretty big right now, but yeah, Atlanta's a good move. But you got to, you know, there's a lot of work that you got to do. You got to do a lot of work, and you got to. There's a lot of stuff that you got. You got to get organized. But I would say, get the hell out of Kansas. I know ain't nothing popping up there. No, it's not. Well, you, this is like yeah. a desert town. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. So, yeah, go down to Atlanta. Um, now, what do you look like? Because you might be able to get you a sugar daddy. What do you look like? <laughs> well, actually, I got to work on my weight. I know you'd be like, the big girls got to work on their weights and stuff like that. So, I definitely got to do that. There you go. Well, you got to put them Kansas City honey buns down. Because you go down to Atlanta, you got to compete. You want to go down there and you get you a suitable mate that will break some bread or, or at least help out with something. They don't even have to break bread, but you want to get a mate that can at least help the hell out. So you got to get your look in order. You got to get your look together. And that's doable because you can control you. You can control your body. You can control what you damn eat. So um, think about that seriously. Moving to Atlanta would be a good lick. What What are you trained in doing, dear? Um, I actually graduated uh, the community college with a business uh, degree. So that's uh mostly that i have I've, I've just worked really mostly in food services okay so mcdonald's and and, and Chuck E. cheese got it yeah. so okay um what you're gonna have to do is get you a skill dear you got to get you a skill while you're working at a square job it's best to have a side skill learn how to do hair learn how to sew clothes learn how to cook food on your own and sell it Have some kind of secondary skill that people will keep coming to you for. Learn how to do nails. Have a secondary skill that you can get down and do. Have some organization skills. That's a skill. Knowing how to organize in the community, that is a skill that you can utilize. So get a skill that you can cultivate so that you will always have a fallback hustle on. You understand? Yes, sir. You're going to be all right, dear. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for talking to me. Yes, indeed. She's going to be all right. She's going to be all right. But you go down to Atlanta, there's a lot of competition. What's up, Brother Thomas? I see you, brother. Our good actor, Thomas. Brother's a phenomenal actor, Thomas Jones. Former NFL player. My brother. Let me let me get Thomas. Let me get you on real quick. Let me get you on real quick. And I, I'm not going to have you talk, say anything out of line. I won't ask you no crazy shit. But let me get you on real quick just to kind of Get your thoughts about a lot of the stuff that's going on. Where you at? Where are you? Hold on. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Real quick, Thomas. Hey, what's up, brother? How you doing, Tariq? I'm good, brother. How you doing, I'm fam? I'm doing good, man. Just joining the spaces and just listening, man. What's up, black people? How y'all doing, man? Love seeing these beautiful black people in this in this space, man. My man, are you in L.A. or New York? Um, actually, in Miami. Um, oh, yeah, okay. I'm in Miami. I'm I'm mostly. In in uh, I'm between Miami and LA, so yeah. yeah. Now, now, how long did you play in the NFL? I played twelve years in the NFL. I played, oh, oh, yeah, from the year two thousand, and I retired in two thousand twelve. Okay, um, what was the vibe in the NFL when you were playing? The vibe is was the vibe happening there now, like it's then as it is now the vibe seems real weird in the nfl as far as the way they treat the players in, in my opinion what was that the same vibe back then oh i mean i think you know obviously you know the the, the nfl is like uh, the nba and 
Major League Baseball, you know, they're all billion dollar corporations, you know. So it's, you know, even though we're playing a sport, you know, it's still a, you know, still run like corporate America, you know. Right. Um, and and the vibe I think has always been the same. I think what's different now is that we have social media, right? So, um, you know, information is is shared faster. Uh, correct information is shared faster. Incorrect information is shared faster. Um, so I think that that speeds up the process in regards to, um, you know, just some of the narratives and, yeah. and, and, and the narratives control the vibes. So, yeah. uh, so it was a little bit different in the, in the early two thousands. Uh, and now obviously 2022, I mean, it's, it's a whole different world altogether, you know, not just yeah. in sports and not just in, in, in the NFL or, or NBA, but just the world in general. Um, when you got out, man, when did you get the acting bug, man? What 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 made you want to get into acting get out the NFL? Ah, uh, man, I retired, and and honestly, I was like, you know, I didn't really know what I wanted to do next. I didn't have anything that I was really too passionate about. You know, I was in the music industry for a few years while I was in New York. I had a, a music label. I loved music, and I was producing music with my artists. Um, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and so. Um, I ended up working on this little project uh, with Clifton Powell um, and, uh, you know, just took a small little role in it, just to be honest, out of boredom. And, uh, and and Cliff really encouraged me. He said I had, he thought I had some raw talent, so he encouraged me to pursue it. And, uh, you know, I didn't have anything to do, so I said, you know what, let me take him up on it. So I got an agent uh, out of New York in 2013, and they started submitting me for auditions in L.A. And so I would fly from Miami to L.A. for a few auditions and, uh, I really wasn't taking it serious, but um, Cliff would just hit me every couple of weeks and was like, you know, hey, nephew, you know what you're doing? You Are you going to do acting classes like I told you to? You know, that type of thing. And yeah. so uh, so I ended up getting booked for um, a few projects without really being in classes. And then I was booked for the show Being Mary Jane uh, on BET. And, and, and once I went and, sh- and filmed that in Atlanta, I realized I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But I also realized, you know, that I have a chance to really make a a, 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 um, a a real transition in this if I took it serious. So in 2014, I decided to move to L.A., get in some acting studios, and uh, and it became just a passion for me. And from 2014 till now, you know, become a working actor and producer. Yes, indeed. So I know you trained in L.A. some, but did you do any training in New York? Did you actually go to acting classes there? I had an acting teacher in in New York, Tracy Moore. She's trained a lot of really, really good actors. But the majority of my classes were were in L.A. I trained with uh, Vonna Chubbuck, um, the world-renowned uh, acting coach, uh, yeah. and Franz Turner, uh, an incredible, incredible, underrated coach, a black guy, black man out there in L.A. that that really trained me uh, to, to become a real actor. So that's where I, the majority of my training was. I was also in a studio of um, Scott Sedita. He has a really, really big studio um, as well. So I was, about four years, I was in two or three different studios for six six hours a week in class. Yeah, you took it serious, serious. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want to get out there and make a fool out of myself, man. You know, I, 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 luckily when I was on the Bill Mary Jane show, the character I played, I could kind of be myself. But right. but if it would have been another character where I had to to really be trained and 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 like have have uh, you know experience and be able to kind of get into my acting toolbox, it wouldn't have worked. They'd have probably had to recast the role. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So so yeah. Once I once I went through that experience, I was like, I don't I don't want to be caught out there not knowing what I'm doing and not comfortable. Um. So yeah yeah, that acting studio, those acting studios in L.A. really put me in. The position I'm in now, so I'm very grateful to be in this business and and also creating content, man, that speaks our truth. You know, I have a TV series on Bounce TV called Johnson. Uh, yeah. It's a black TV show. Basic, basically, it's a show told from the black male POV, and uh, it's really interesting, man. You know, we get into some very provocative conversations and honest, raw conversations from the black black perspective overall, but but specifically from four black men, all different essences, all four guys, different energies. Um, you know, we, the, the premise around the show is there's four best friends that have been friends since childhood and, uh, it just navigates through our lives, you know, and our, our, our relationships, uh, with our, with our women relationships in corporate America. Um, and the, the cool part about it is all the four guys, we all have the same last name, Johnson, and that is symbolic of the black experience. So, yeah. uh, so you can stream it now. It's on a, in the app called Brown Sugar. 
Uh, we finished season two uh, probably about a month ago. And so and does Cedric produce that? Yeah, Cedric the Entertainer is a producer on that, along with myself and my producing partner, Deji LeRae. Uh, okay. so, uh, so, yeah, we, uh, we, we do a co-production on that. And uh, yeah, it's a really, really good show. You know, if you're if you want to see positive black men that are talking about positive, uh, you know, issues in the community and, and dealing with some really, really tough conversations, uh, I think it's a really good show for you to check out. Absolutely. And shout out to Clifton Powell, too, man. That, that's, that brother is so underrated as an actor. He's such a powerful brother. Is man and, and Cliff, you know, he loves the culture. You know, he's worked on so many projects, um, and, and he doesn't discriminate. You know, if, if you're black, he's going to give you a chance. As talented as he is, he's very, very humble, yeah. um, and he he loves to uh, to contribute to the culture. He's a he's he's a very underrated and underappreciated actor, but he's he's I mean he's he's one of the best. I mean, I really see him as a as a mentor in his business. Yes, indeed. And for some of y'all who don't know who we're talking about, Clifton Powell, his the infamous role of Pinky in um, the Friday movie, that's Pinky. Phenomenal, phenomenal actor. Yeah. But Tom, man, I appreciate you for calling up, man. We got to yes, chop sir. When you come out to LA, we got to really chop it up, brother. Most definitely, brother. Most All right, definitely. Man. You be All good. Right, yes, sir. Thomas, man, real solid brother right there. Yeah, Clifton, he's one of my favorite actors. Clifton Powell is a phenomenal actor. That brother has so much range. He can do serious, dramatic, um, um, comedic, you know, so that brother has a serious range. You know, I can appreciate good actors. Let's get G the Raldo. Let's get G the Raldo in here. What's up, G the Raldo? What's up, brother? What's up, G? Hop on, G the Raldo. Hop on. Where you at, brother? All right, well, we're waiting on G the Raldo to get his microphone together. We're going to check some other people. But like I said, we're out here in Washington, D.C. We're getting ready for the rally for reparations. Everybody in here, what we need everybody to do, because we're making a historic moment right now, and this is all grassroots. We're not getting anything from the right. We're not getting anything from the left. We're getting this from the soil. This is all us putting this monumental project together. And if you want to contribute and get your spiritual essence tapped into history, you can go to rallyforreparations.com and donate to the creation of this monumental event that we're doing tomorrow. That's rally the number four reparations.com. Rally the number four reparations. We need everybody. The ancestors need you to put some on that, whatever is in your spirit, whatever the ancestors is telling you. Let's put that down because we're doing this for ourselves and we're doing this for the ancestors. We're we're avenging the the spirit and the memory of the ancestors. We're getting what they want us to get. They've been wanting us to get what we're supposed to get. They've been wanting us to stand up to say, hey, we need to be compensated for what our ancestors suffered. Our ancestors didn't sit up here suffering for nothing, and we ain't saying nothing about getting compensated for their labor. Do you respect your ancestors? I respect mine. That's why we're out here, Washington, D.C., representing for ourselves, representing and respecting our foundation of Black American ancestors, getting what they sacrificed us to get. You dig? We're doing this for them. This is not just a physical event. This is a metaphysical and a spiritual event. You understand? We're focusing on the physical, though, because we got to get to that money. You know, let's get some more people in here. Let's get Miss Logic. Let's get Miss Logic in here. Miss Logic, hop on, ma'am. Miss Logic. Peace and reparations, family, and Tariq. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. uh, I wanted to wish everyone tomorrow a safe a very safe and successful uh, rally. 
Uh, Tariq, I've been watching you since New York. I just moved to North Carolina and Mm -hmm. I adore you and peace and blessings to your family. And that's all I wanted to say, sir. Thank you so much, beloved. I appreciate you, dear. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's Miss Logic. Miss Logic over there looking like somebody's sexy auntie. One of them hot aunties. I see you, Miss Logic. Sounding like Catwoman. Hello, Tariq. Hello, young man. <laughs> you are here trying to seduce a nigga. I hear you, Miss Logic. Hello, Tariq. I have some butterscotch for you. Do you like butterscotch, young man? I have a whole jar of it. Come get the butterscotch. What are you going to do for me? <laughs> Shout out to the sexy aunties out there. Oh, well, Queen T wants to get back on. Let's get Queen Tizzo. Queen Tizzo wants to get back on. Hop on, Queen Tizzo. Hey, so I just had a, a question in regards to the actual strategy for tomorrow. Like, how are yeah. you how are you yeah. going to quantify the payments? Like, what's the actual plan? How are you presenting it? And what's going to be the end result? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about all that tomorrow. We got so many different speakers hitting every cylinder of that. We got um, Boyce is going to talk about some of the financial aspects of it. Um, um, our brother Marcel is going to talk about some of the legislative policies that can be utilized. Um, Sister Teslin is going to be talking about major political strategies that can be used and who to target as far as that. Um, we're going to have Brother James Small talking about how to quantify it, how some of the payments can be issued. Brother Cobb is going to talk about who, in addition to the federal government, is responsible for the payment. We lay in it all out. So, yeah, all of that is going to be covered tomorrow. Are, uh, ma- ma- um, Queen Tizzo, how come you didn't come up, by the way? Well, I just found about this today on Twitter, but I actually have oh. one more one more question, too. So ahead, are, are you familiar with the, the Black Law Dictionary? Yes, I am. Mm-hmm. So in regards to the actual laws that are on the book, like the 14th Amendment, like, is there going to be any discussion around, like, how to change some of the laws to basically make it easier for the money to be repaid? Like how? What do you, what do you mean? So, like, for example, like, if you look in the Black Law Dictionary, like the word black and how black people are not really considered citizens. So in terms of having no nationality that's tied to the nation, it's easy for certain crimes that happen against us to not be any type of, like, major punishment. Um, that's that's um right now say so the law listen this listen this is the thing because people get into that black's law dictionary that ain't it the constitution is supposed to protect everybody you you dig every human being is supposed to be a citizen and everybody's supposed to get equal protection and equal treatment under the law and we don't and they throw the constitution out the window all the time you understand? And they'll even do it for white people. They'll throw the Constitution out. If a white person is trying to protect a black person, they use political fiat. They use I'm white and I say so. That's the law of the land. I want people to understand that. Not the Black's Law Dictionary, because even if you got this so-called nationality, because I've, I've had conversations about nationality before, you have to have a military to enforce the nationality. You have to enforce what's going to be given to that nationality. You understand? So what we're doing now is foundational black Americans. Um, and and another, another thing, too, with that whole Black's Law Dictionary where they say the word black means dead and all, fuck all that. Just because the white supremacists made the word black a negative, we don't have to buy into that. The, there's been different variations of the word black, and it wasn't negative. Um, ancient Egypt was Kemet. That wasn't a negative term, and Kemet means land of the black. Um Black wasn't always a negative term. The white supremacists, tra- they made it negative and we're following their lead. We ain't buying into that. You have people with the word black getting stuff. You have Blackfoot Indians. They get paid. They got the word black in their name. So we, we got to get off that. What we need is a code. If we have a code, we'll get stuff done. You get shit done by having a what if or or else. If there's an or else, you get anything you want done. And it ain't going to be showing them a piece of paperwork. You got to have an or else. And our or else right now is to um, strategize our vote and withhold the vote 
if they don't give us what we want and make one political party crash and burn, which is what we're doing now. That's why they're so afraid and they're shaking in their boots because the Democrats are not getting the support they want and they can't galvanize us without giving us tangibles. You understand? I understand completely. So my last and final question is this. What is the dollar amount? Is it going to be 10 trillion, 20 trillion, 30 trillion? Well, we got to start off with 20 trillion. We got to start off there. That's okay. a start. We're going to start off there. So we got numbers and we got ways to quantify who's qualified. If your ancestry can trace back to the 1870 census, um, at least one parent has to trace back there. You have to be a person who's been classified as black for the last 10 years, at least, um, because we don't want a bunch of Rachel Dolezal's popping up. So, yeah, there's strategies and techniques on how to do it. Definitely. Got it. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, beloved. Very nice sister. Good questions. Very good questions. Uh, okay. Anyway, yeah, I'm a, I'll be on here all night, man. Let me start getting ready so I can, because it's one o'clock over here. So let me, I'm up here. I'm excited. I'm so excited about tomorrow. I need to be here resting. My voice is going to be a long day and a powerful day tomorrow, man. So family. Oh, let me get, I see my brother, Sir Major. Let me get my brother, Sir Major. Before I leave. Uh oh, my, my battery's getting low. Hold on. All right. Sir Major, hop on, sir. Hey, man. Tariq, well, yeah, bro, there you go. Hey, man. I'm good, man. How you doing? Fine. Thank you, man. I'm, I'm super excited about tomorrow. Uh, quick question. When it comes to media, yeah. how can folks find out what's happening live uh, right there on the, on the ground? Those who are unable to be there, is there a link that you're going to send out? Um, I'm going to try to see because I know if we stream it and there's music going to be playing, uh -huh. it'll get struck so um, we're going to figure that out. We're going to figure okay. out the streaming. And it, since there's going to be a lot of people out there, there's going to be a lot of people posting online okay. and things like that. Okay. Just, oh. if you, okay. Let, let me say this. You just gave me a good idea. Thank you, brother. Okay. You know what? Everybody do. Everybody's coming tomorrow. Stay on Twitter and just keep using rally for reparations. Use that hashtag and just put everything under that hashtag. We'll do it like that. We can, everybody can keep tabs on what's going on. We're going to, we got a camera crew. We're going to be filming stuff, but we have to edit stuff out um, as far as the music. So we don't get no strikes. And um, like I said, revolt TV is going to be there tomorrow, but everybody, when you come to the rally tomorrow, um, starting first thing in the morning, family rally for reparations, use that hashtag all day, ladies and gentlemen, this is how grassroots stuff works. This is how grassroots work from every everybody listening right now. Starting in the morning, use the rally for reparations hashtag. Make that stay viral all day. And everybody at the event, just keep posting everything under that hashtag so people can check the hashtag and see what's popping. All right. And everybody right now, do one last hit at the website, rallyforreparations.com. Hit the donate button, ladies and gentlemen, so we can pull this monumental event off and make it go smoothly. And I appreciate everybody who's contributed so far. But we're here, man. We're doing it. We're doing it for you. We're doing it for the ancestors. We're doing it for our children. And we're doing it for us, family. And we're making it happen. So I look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow. Again, go to Rally 4, the number 4, Reparations.